see what we could help out with at the KICY radio station's apartment building thing and we had a good time. Um, I guess my thing was finding what these people needed up there was, well I met a lady coming back on the plane from Anchorage back here who's the or she used to be the counselor at Cambridge High School. And her daughter lives up in Anchorage and she is a social worker and she goes out, flies out to these villages like where we were and talks to these people about depression and because there's a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of suicides within the last six months and just how they live their life and how they can change, like with alcoholism was a big was a big struggle for people up there and so I was able I told her what we went up there for and she's like, Oh my daughter does you know or goes out and helps these these villages with getting their structure back and figuring out what they need to do to better their lives. So um but it was a really good time. We all four got along together. <laughs> <laughs> I think. No, I'm just <laughs> and uh, we just had a good time and we learned how to do things. The work ethic there isn't as great as <laughs> we know it as. So, um, But it was a great experience for all four of us. So. Well, before we left, um, Marshall had given us an email and told us different things to think about. And one of the things that he asked us was look for ways that God is working. Um, and first of all, we saw God's providence from you all as you donated four suitcases of food for us, which was more than we could ever eat. But um, thank you so much for your contribution and even for the monetary amount that was given to pay for the excess bags. Um, we were provided with a four bedroom home. We were provided with a pickup. So those were some very practical ways that we saw God's providence. Sunday morning, we worshiped in Nome Covenant Church, which was really a, a great, a lot of fun to be in a, a different covenant church and the worship was very vibrant. Um, we were surprised to find out that the speaker was John Wenrick. They are just starting out on their vitality pathway. So that's one way that God is working there in that church. Um, a group of women promoted the women's retreat, and I thought, wow, this sounds fun. I'd like to go to their retreat. Well, then I realized that they have to get on a plane to go to their women's retreat. They don't go to use the three roads out of Nome. They have to fly to Anchorage, and then they're there in order to get to their women's retreat. So there was a great deal of commitment and excitement for that event, and they were ready to go. Um, there was also another group, a missions group there attending that day from Pennsylvania, and they were um, preparing to convert a, an old garage into housing for a youth intern who would come and work with the, the native Alaskan youth who, like Tracy said, there's a great deal of suicide and depression and alcoholism and um, large ministry is needed in that area. Um, one, one way that... Um, we, we were able to help in addition to working on the triplex and, and the work that we did. Um, I, I think just the very fact that that project is in existence is a sign of God's working in providing the, the money, the charitable contributions, the uh, grants that uh, Dennis, the station manager, was able to get, the volunteer labor and the work teams that have come over the summer. Um, so that, that the whole project in itself is a, a way God is working. Uh, we were able to um, do some things. We, we um, oh, I just kind of stood around and took pictures in the rain, but the, the other three helped. A neighbor lady, to, she has her house next to the triplex, and she bought a new, she's a teacher. She came from Alabama, and she's teaching. She bought a new refrigerator. She needed help moving the refrigerator in, so they all helped her, and she gave them a plate of chocolate chip cookies. But anyway, we hope that was an encouragement and a way to bless her. Um, we also, I, in the email that we sent back, that was probably read 
while we were gone, we, there was another gentleman who was helping on the transmitter to get the AM station on, online, and uh, he just couldn't find the problem. His name was Ralph, and he, he was gonna he was almost ready to leave, and he thought, what am I gonna do? I, got, I, can't, I don't know what to do, I checked everything. So we just prayed that the Lord would give him guidance and direct him to whatever it was that was this little glitch that was keeping the AM station off, off the, the line, or off the air. And then during the day, we had a little solar, solar powered radio in our triplex, that we, so we turned it on, and we thought, hey, AM is working, Ralph found it. So he came back that night, and he was all smiles, and he said, thank you for your prayers. He found the glitch at 10 in the morning, and he was able to go fishing, so he was real happy. <laughs> so we were glad to be of encouragement for him, and we invited him to eat with us, and he stayed with us, and, and so I think he was blessed by that, rather than staying alone in a hotel room. So we just were glad to be there and be an encouragement and a blessing to KICY, they are a vital part of the ministry. They're the largest station. They go out the farthest in Alaska and, and Russia. And so they have a huge ministry and they need to be on, on the air. And the purpose of this project was to help in the housing situation, which is very short in Nome. So they're providing three extra apartments and some heated so storage area, which is a luxury and then the money from the rental income and the storage income will provide extra funding for the radio station. So that is critical for them. I get to talk a little bit about the work ethic. Um, two country boys from Minnesota work a lot harder than a gnome resident on an average. We just show up and work, that's the difference. But. Uh, the thing that we, one of the things we learned, everything in Nome, the jobs are social service, and people live basically on the fact that the check's in the mail or in the mailbox, uh, and they don't have to work as hard. And when we were there, we found them a little bit in a diversion in that it's the gathering time, and they subsistence live on a lot of the fish and the caribou and the moose and what they have permits to hunt for. And fishes, I don't think they need a permit or a license, but they are out gathering salmon, many of them, for the winter. And the one gentleman that gave us our salmon, and that was very good, uh, he was, his daughter was going down to Anchorage to school. She needed 25. His dad needed 25, you know, and these salmon, you know, the five of us, Ralph and us, we ate on that one salmon. We had leftovers. But they're gathering so that they can get through the winter uh, with their subsistence living. Uh, and so if there was a work project, construction project, that kind of came second. Uh, they, they made sure they were getting their fish and uh, caribou season was about to start. So I, uh, we didn't get no caribou, although Marty offered, if we got one, he'd give us some, but he, we never seen him again with caribou, so. Uh, but the thing that we, really noticed was there's a significant and different work ethic and I'll just say this as long as Don let me do the easy stuff we got along fine <laughs> <laughs> and it's true you know I, I'm not good at this there is a continuing need to put cabinetry and finish the project uh, they're trying to get one of the apartments open October 1st uh, evidently they were able to paint too since we've left the painters came in and they were be able to finish the taping and things and paint two and the one that we didn't get done probably still needs to be taped but we got we put a lot of sheetrock <laughs> in corners so Don I just talk about what we did then yeah <clears throat> go ahead we, we sheetrocked <laughs> <laughs> we got the majority of the last apartment sheetrocked we didn't quite finish it we ran out of time which was kind of a bummer but we worked every day except Sunday and uh, it was really a, um, it, I, it was the first mission trip I've ever been on. And I think a lot of times when people go on a mission trip, they work with people. And we didn't really do that. We work, you know, hopefully to better the lives of people, I guess you might say. And, and I really enjoyed it. And I would highly recommend it if uh, you ever have a chance to do it. Um, the Yeah, we had a great time. Um, I, it was just a great experience, you know. I, uh, 